Hey guys, Nabil here. On May 31st, uh, SNK did a presentation of Samurai Showdown in Korea where they uh, uh, invited the media, uh, including IGN Korea and many of the uh, Korean uh, media outlets, to present Samurai Showdown, talk about the game. And in this presentation, well, in gameplay wise, there's nothing new revealed, but there was a lot of very interesting things that I noticed in the presentation. Some of them are directly related to the lore of Samurai Showdown. Others are hints to the future DLC, maybe? So we'll go through some of them here quickly. Now, the first thing that actually caught my eye is they, they showed this presentation, um, you know, slides talking about the series first Samurai Showdown, how this new game is actually a reboot, not in terms of story, but in terms of gameplay. So it's taking the series back to basics and Samurai Showdown 2 is actually the actual base of the game. So game director and art director Nobuyuki Koroki was the main person doing the presentation. And there was some interesting things that I, that I see in the presentation. So they have this slide that shows the story of the game, of the series based on the game. So which one is first, which one is second. And as you know, the new Samurai Showdown is set between Samurai Showdown 5 or Samurai Spirit Zero and the first Samurai Showdown. And in that list where we see all the games, there's many, you know, missing titles from the, this official timeline that they're, they're doing. So the first game of the series, according to the presentation timeline, is Samurai Showdown 5 followed by Samurai Showdown uh, 2019, if you want to call it that. After that comes the first Samurai Showdown game, which is set in 1787. And right after, it's actually Samurai Showdown 2. It's not showing Samurai Showdown 3 and 4, which are set between these two games. I'm, I'm not sure if they were omitted just to try to put everything in one slide. Uh, but for some reason, it's not, it's not in there. Are those games not canon anymore? I'm not sure, I don't know why they're not in there. Follow, following Samurai Showdown 2, there is that Samurai Showdown 64, and after Samurai 64 is 60, uh, 64 2, which is Ashura Zanmaden, which is Warrior's Raid, but not the one set in the future. And interestingly enough, that game is not put, is not in that timeline as well. Now, I'm not sure if this is, you know, the new um, canon timeline that we're gonna have, or they just omitted those titles for you know, to just fit everything in one in one slide. I'm really not sure, but it's really, really weird that at least I would understand if Samurai Showdown Warriors Rage, the PlayStation uh, exclusive title, which is set 20 years after the events of the main series, is not part of the timeline anymore. I can understand that, but Samurai Showdown 3 and 4, Zankuro and Amakusa's Resurrection or Re-Resurrection is kind of strange. Um, I guess time will tell. Speaking about story, we had some new screens showing the story mode, uh, some scenes and and and, and uh, uh, artwork from the story mode. Um, you know, we we see how Maru Nakuru, Galford, Earthquake, and then some some pretty pretty looking uh, images uh, done by Yumi Saji. And then there was something revealed uh, when they talked about the Samurai Showdown being set between. Um, Samurai Showdown 5 and 1. The reason given why they chose that is very interesting. Uh, the main reason, uh, according to Nobuyuki Koroki, is Nakoruru. Because Nakoruru dies in Samurai Showdown 2. Now, yes, she's back in 64 and 64 Warriors Rage, but there's, there's a story behind it that you can learn about in the Samurai Showdown Bushido Tales Episode 4, Nakoruru which should be streaming uh, now or in the next couple days. So yeah, this, this is the main, main reason, because Nakuru is so popular, they wanted to, you know, to have her in the game before she actually dies, which she, she does in Samurai Showdown 2. He also mentioned something very interesting, and in that he specifically said that at this time, Amakusa Shiro Tokisada is alive. So we know that Amakusa is the boss of the first game, however, we didn't know if he was alive at the time of, of these, this prequel. So now we have confirmation that he's alive and active. It's just not his plan has not come into fruition yet. So does that mean Amakusa could be a DLC as well? Maybe. But Amakusa is alive. And he also mentioned that the 
boss of the game is a new character and mentioning Amakusa then mentioning the boss kind of it kind of gives me a hint that the boss is probably related to Amakusa and there was the, these rumors that it's, it could be Tenhime or, or Tokihime from the Samurai Showdown um, RPG. Um, I'm not sure again, just speculation. Which, which is again very interesting that they're thinking about the story, taking the story this seriously, which is, you know, really happy that they're doing that. Um, the other thing is is quite a nice hint, I would, I would, I would guess. Um, in, in a Q&A session, they were asking Nobuyuki-san about, you know, various things about the game. Uh, some, some important questions, some silly questions. Um, and one of them was talking about the which character that he wanted to have in the roster, at which he was not able to. And that, that character is none other than Nainhal Seeger from Samurai Showdown 2, which is... Which the, guy, the guy has quite a following. True, he was only part of Samurai Showdown 2 and the non-canon Samurai Showdown 6. But uh, Nobuyuki san said that he really wanted to have him in the base roster, but he could not. Now, I'm not sure if that's a hint that uh, Seeger will be uh, coming to the game, uh, you know, as DLC or not. But the fact that he's a favorite of the game director and the art director really give Seeger um, quite a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, quite a higher chance for him to be included as DLC. Um, time will tell, I guess. Um, other questions which was kind of uh, kind of interesting, they, they talked about the violence of the game and how, you know, when the characters get, you know, cut into two halves, they ask why is it not realistic, you know, and, and Nobuyuki-san said that they could have made it realistic, you know, like the engine allowed them to do that, but he didn't want it to be as you know, graphic, uh, you know, bloody, so they, they went with this direction, and they even asked him if they're planning to, you know, add the realistic uh, cutting and blood and gore as a DLC down the line or an update, but he uh, clearly said no, that's not gonna happen. Um, the other questions were, you know, talking about not having a Korean character in Samurai Showdown, and he said he would, he would want to have one uh, down the line. Um, they also talked about the DLC, how the four characters are already set. They did not mention them, obviously, but uh, new character will be coming to the game every two months, starting from from uh, August. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, you know, nothing really, uh, really you know, out of the ordinary, nothing really big. But it's it's this part here where they wanted to have Nakururu alive, and that's why the game is set in between five and one. And the fact that he's really wanting to have Seeger in the game, I think, are the important, the most important two points from this presentation. Um, let me let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, please subscribe if you have not done so. There's a lot of lot of content coming your way from Neo Geo now. And until next time, guys. Thank you for watching.